Hey, it's Lucky. In this series, I want to cover every single note that Godot has to offer. We're going to go through them in chapters. Today we're starting with 3D notes, specifically visual and physics notes. But at the end of this series, we'll have covered every single note within Godot. So strap in, because this is going to go quite fast. Now, if you're anything like me and you want to efficiently level up your game development skills for free, you got to try out Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science and computer science interactively. With thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics and new lessons being added every month, there's always something new to learn. Personally, I find myself shamefully googling basic math operations on a daily basis when building games. Brilliant has helped me get back on top of my math game. But whether you're a math pro or could use a refresh on the basics like myself, Brilliant has you covered. Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and lets you learn at your own pace. Take a quick quiz when you sign up and get matched with the content that fits your skill level and interests. I've been really enjoying the math courses, but Brilliant covers a lot of diverse and interesting topics. Whether you want to up your data skills or work on writing better and cleaner code, Brilliant has you covered. Brilliant's coding courses are designed to teach you the fundamentals of programming and use real world examples to help you learn. So try Brilliant for free for a full 30 days at brilliant.org slash lucky. And the first 200 people that sign up using my link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So get in there before they're gone at brilliant.org slash lucky. The Node Treaty. This is the most basic treaty note. All notes we're going to cover today inherit from the Node Treaty. It keeps track of position, rotation, scale and visibility and is most used as a basis to inherit from or as a parent node to contain a bunch more nodes. The Marker 3D. The Marker 3D node is exactly the same as the Node 3D, only it shows the axis of the nodes within the editor. It can be useful to keep track of invisible nodes or a point in space. Visual Instance 3D. This node is not used standalone, but it's a basis for all visible nodes to inherit from. So everything that you can see in your scene, it's based on a Visual Instance 3D. It keeps track of what visual layer the node is on and its bounding box. So basically the space in which the visual is contained. The Geometry Instance 3D. Just like the Visual Instance 3D, this node is not used standalone, but it's a basis for all geometry based nodes, aka models. It keeps track of lighting, shadow and LOD settings, and it has a very useful material override property, which can be used to easily apply a custom material across all material slots of a model. The Mesh Instance 3D. This node takes mesh data and combined with the two previous nodes, instantiates that mesh. It can be used with Godot's built-in meshes or you can import your own models. It holds the model and all its materials. The Multi-Mesh Instance 3D. If you intend to instantiate a bunch of meshes, like I'm talking more than a thousand in a close proximity, this node allows you to do that with optimized GPU performance. It has a built-in population tool, which allows you to distribute the mesh upon another mesh. This node definitely has a lot more to get into, so I'll leave the link to the docs down below. The Label 3D. The Label 3D node is used for displaying text in 3D. That simple. The most important property on this node is the billboard flag, which makes the text face the camera, and the pixel size and font size properties. This allows you to change the resolution of the text. Decal. The decal node is used to project the texture onto geometry. Decal's most famous use is in bullet holes on walls or sprays in games like Team Fortress 2 and Counter-Strike. The Sprite 3D and Animated Sprite 3D. Sprite 3D and animated Sprite 3Ds are used for rendering 2D sprites in 3D. They differ from just drawing a texture on a basic plane because they have built-in features like a billboard property which makes the sprite face the camera and animation properties that allow you to easily implement 2D animation sprite sheets into 3D. The World Environment node. This is one of the most useful nodes in Godot. The World Environment node allows you to change the global lighting settings of your scene, add various post-processing effects like tone mapping, SSAO and depth of field for example, and it allows you to set up effects like volumetric fog and global illumination. The Fog Volume node. When volumetric fog is enabled in the world environment, this node allows you to add volumes of fog to your scene. GPU Particles 3D. This is the particle system of Godot. It really deserves a video of its own because it has a lot of features and settings. The most important things to know are the emitting settings can be changed in the process material property, where you need to create a new process material, and the visual of the particle itself can be set up in the draw passes. Again, there's way too much to cover here in this video, but most of the properties are very straightforward, so definitely just play around with it and see what you can make. GPU particle attractors and GPU particle collisions. These six nodes are used to manipulate particles in the GPU particle system node. The collision nodes are used as you would expect, and they can be used to give the particles something to collide with, and the attractors can be used to manipulate the flow of the particles by pushing or pulling them. The Light 3D node. The Light 3D node is once again one of those nodes that cannot be used standalone, but instead serves as a basis for various different lights in Godot. It contains properties like light strength, 
color and size, and shadow settings. These settings will be applied to the following different lights. The Omnidirectional Light 3D. This is the most basic type of light. It shines from one point to all directions around it. It contains two important properties. Its range, which determines the distance the light reaches, and its attenuation, which controls the falloff, meaning how much the light dims over the distance that it travels. The Spotlight 3D. This light is very similar to the omnidirectional lights in the way that they both have a range and an attenuation, but as you can imagine, the Spotlight 3D has a specific angle in which it emits light, giving the spotlight effect. The Directional Light 3D. This light is a little different. It lights up the scene from one angle and has no range or falloff. It's used to set up a sun or a moonlight in your scene and has a lot of properties for tweaking its shadow settings. The most important properties are the fade start and the max distance. These properties allow you to tweak how far away from the camera the shadows are rendered. CSG shapes. CSG shapes or constructive solid geometry shapes are meant to be used in prototyping and allow you to easily combine and subtract 3D shapes using Boolean operations with the option to enable collisions. They are great for quickly combining shapes and blocking out stages and interiors. They can be used standalone or combined into new shapes using the CSG combiner node. Let's get into the physics. The softbody 3D. This is kind of a weird one. The softbody 3D node inherits from a geometry node and converts the geometry to a softbody physics simulation. It is currently quite buggy, so don't use it for gameplay elements, but they are great for quick visuals like flags and cloth. The collision object 3D. This is another node that cannot be used standalone, but it serves as the basis for all 3D nodes that collide with other objects. The most important properties are its collision mask and layer. These layers allow you to specify what objects can collide with it and what objects it can collide with. These may sound like the same thing, but this is actually a very important distinction. For example, you could have a door that triggers a cutscene. You would want your enemies and your players to collide with the door so they can't move past it, but you would only want the door to collide with the player to trigger the cutscene upon that collision. The physics body 3D. Again, a node that does nothing on its own, but serves as a basics for all physics bodies. It contains some properties for locking certain movement or rotation axes of the physics body. The following nodes we are about to cover are different types of physics bodies. All these physics bodies will need a collision shape to work. The collision shape defines the shape of the physics bodies, and Godot comes with a lot of default shapes like boxes, capsules and squares, but of course you can import or create your own shapes. The static body 3D. A static body 3D node is a physics body that stays in one place meaning it cannot be pushed around or dragged down by gravity. It is used for things like walls and floors, and if the static body is moved, for example by code, it is, in a physics sense, teleported to the new location, so it won't push balls up or move things to the side when it's moved. You can, however, do that with a animatable body 3D. This is a static physics body in the way that it cannot be pushed or pulled down by gravity, but it does have the ability to push or pull other objects. So when you move this within an animation or within code, it will apply the appropriate effects to the physics bodies in its way. The rigid body 3D. This is the physics body that is used for almost all physics objects not controlled by the player. So falling boxes, flying arrows, you name it. It is pulled down by gravity and can collide with other physics bodies and it has properties for defining its mass, bounciness and friction. The character body 3D. Character body 3Ds are types of physics bodies that can be controlled by the player. They contain a lot of built-in features to make movement easy to control with code. And Godot comes with a beautiful template that demonstrates these features. The Area 3D node. This node was a little confusing to me at first, but the Area 3D node acts as two things. One, a detection field. It detects when collision objects enter it and leave it, so it can be used for a trigger area or a teleport area. And two, it can be used to define an area with its own physics and audio settings. You can change things like gravity, wind, and the audio channel that the sound is going through. This allows you to create areas like underwater areas or zero gravity areas in your game. Alright, we've gone through quite a lot of notes today. Uh, there's still some physics notes I left out and a couple of visual notes using probes and reflection mapping. But we'll definitely get to those. At the end of this series, I'm gonna combine all these videos into one long video. It will take about two hours, I think. And then you can have one giant video of just going through every single node within Godot. So yeah, if you wanna see that video or my other content, I do projects and tutorial videos, consider a subscription. Bye.